Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Youth Matters, a show looking at local, global and national issues affecting the youth. Now on today's show we are discussing the topic of the Grenfell Tower disaster. As, uh, as the world is aware, on the 14th of June uh, many innocent people lost their lives. A day of sorrow and tragedy uh, overcame us as a nation. But subhanAllah, it brought many communities together. And today we are discussing this topic and how it's affected so many people locally and globally. Uh, I am delighted to invite uh, three guests providing different perspectives on the topic. First of all, we have Tahir who is joining us, who is a university student. We also have um, Brother Amjad, who is uh, from Sakina Tours. And we also have Brother Abdul uh, Malik, who is part of Anaya Aid. So thank you for coming on the show. As always, uh, you know, today's topic is, uh, has had so many headlines uh, around the world. And what we want to know from you watching at home is, what are your thoughts? Have you been involved? Have you seen what's happened? Do you know a relative who might have been impacted by this? If so, please get in touch. You've got the phone number on the screen as well as the email or you can contact us via social media. But whatever your views are, whatever your kind of experiences are, we want to know from you. And we want to know, is it a true reflection of what we've seen in the media? Or is your experience different from that? Alhamdulillah, last comrade show Oilo Afnara Hunchoin Soddo Tarik Junor Gwen Fell Tower or Agun Zekta Laksil Building Go Khoto Manush Morsoin Ar Okta Luya Alhamdulillah Khoto Balo Oise Khne Khoto Manush Community Ma Zek Logi Aisoin Khoto Charity Group Ainte Thara Shay Johor Soin Amra Zanta Asku Okta Luya Amra Discussion Khormo Ar Amra Zanta Sai Ran Afnara Sinor Khio Ikta Tin Vol Dastani Afnara Khoto Min Vol Dastani Afnara Zano Ni Khio Afnara Gya Kivan Ni Zek Afnara Help Horsoin Afnara Kita Dekhsoin Kita Hunchoin Okta Luya Amra Asku Discussion Or Tahir I'll start off by asking uh, the first question to you. Um, what was what was your initial reaction uh, when you learnt about the obviously fire and the spreading and the pace at which it was, uh, you know, just uh, revolving? Personally, I was a bit in sh I was a bit in shock because we live in London, a well built up city. You know, we should have all these facilities, all these nice buildings. Mm. But for a building like that to go down in a matter of hours, completely burnt down to a crisp, mm. I was a bit shocked and um, many lives were lost. Mm. There could have been other things done. Sure. Abdul Malik, what, when did you, because obviously this was during the month of Ramadan, yeah, when most people uh, were probably at that time when the fire started just after 12, yeah. uh, either, either in the Tarawih, uh, yeah. the night prayer, or would have been coming home. Um, where, where were you and what were you doing at the time? Well, at that time I was home. Uh, first thing we had was a video message from everyone. So we saw a fire catching the fire, someone called from motorway. That was mm. the first reaction. instinct. So he started off with the first floor. So I was thinking, okay, uh, the fire brigade will do a job because it's just started on this one floor. That was it. A few minutes later, I just sent another video that is catched everywhere, just near enough in about half an hour uh, separation. So what happened was, a few of my friends, they were the first people in the scene. They're from Sufa Global. Sure. So they were the first people there, so they provided water and everything okay. as a human needed. So that's what, they were there at the first scene. So, okay, so it was, uh, it came quite, you know, uh, quite quick uh, yeah. uh, immediately. Amjad, Brother Amjad, um, in terms of did you expect when you saw what you saw, surely you'd have thought, yeah, it'll be under control very soon, right? Um, the, the thing was happened, my initial reaction was actually a shock. I was actually shocked mm. um, when I saw the first uh, the video. Because uh, what happened was, I grew up in this area. Mm, so normal. when I saw the video, I was like, oh, I know this place. And then suddenly I realized it's actually 10 minutes away from my mom's house. And um, But you probably, sh at that time, you must have been thinking, It'll be, uh, even though it's kind of devastating to see that, it'll be under control very soon. Yes, yeah, so, uh, we did actually. We thought, you know what, um, because tall buildings are designed where the fire does not go from one floor to another floor. Mm. And this has been in place for a very, very long time. So we thought, yes, um, we can see the fire on one side and there was live footage as well. So we were expecting the uh, fire brigade to take control of it very soon. But still, we can see the fire growing. Wow. We're like, well, what is this? What's going on here? There's sure. something wrong here. Mm. And we're watching it for literally for hours. Uh, a live, okay. Live and uh, and uh, what we'll do is we'll actually watch, uh, uh, if we could have uh, the footage shown. Um, this is a footage of obviously uh, some of the uh, video clips that came to us uh, via TV, via phones, tablets. And these are, you know, let's just recall uh, what people were seeing on the night of this uh, tragedy. These were the unbearable scenes in West London as people living in the flats realised what was happening to them. As the fire raced uncontrollably up the high-rise building, options included either jumping 
or trying to use makeshift ropes. This guy's sending a rope! From bedding or curtains. It. it was so intense, the combined forces of dozens of fire crews could do little to stop it. I literally just heard screaming. I saw people jumping out of their windows. The building was literally on fire. It was horrific because I saw uh, families screaming, you know, and people on the edge, it looked like they wanted to jump out. By the time it was lights, the entire block had been destroyed. It was the worst thing experienced fire staff had ever seen. This is a unprecedented incident. In my 29 years of being a firefighter, I have never, ever seen anything of this scale. Down the road, people who'd lost everything were gathering. This centre had become both a collection point for food and other donations and a place where people could check names of loved ones against a list of the missing or the dead. Many were coming back out, inconsolable. I don't want to say anything, but I mean... I just, I just want everything to be false and I just don't want to say anything in a way. The thing that's perhaps most disturbing about this is the speed with which the fire managed to engulf the entire building. Safety regulations in this country are very strict. Fires are usually confined to perhaps one or at most two floors of a building. Something here has gone absolutely catastrophically wrong. The fire service investigation is bound to focus on repeated complaints from the Tower Block's residence group about an alleged lack of safety. Recent renovation work was even questioned as being a fire risk. Three and a half months ago, I was watching him coming in with the insulation and I said to one of the workers, what are you doing with this insulation? Why are you putting it in the building? He says, oh, it's to keep you cool in the summer and to keep you warm in the winter. And I said, is it? And I says, watch this. And I tore off a little, broke off a little piece of it. Yeah, I put it on the back of my phone. And then after I put it on the back of my phone, I lit it with my lighter and I watched that little piece of phone go fsss. And I says, you're putting that in this building, yeah? There were boilers in some places located next to doorways. So if a boiler caught fire, someone wouldn't be able to exit their property. There were boilers that were located above fuse boxes. Um, there were, I mean, there was always the concern there was one stairwell which went down out of the building, just the one. And, um, and the, the, the fire strategy was to stay put. And there wasn't an evacuation test in the two and a half years that I lived there. By the morning rush hour, West London was at a standstill, among other concerns that the building might collapse. It is at once a human tragedy, and it is feared a disaster that was waiting to happen. In so that was a footage uh, from Al Jazeera covering, obviously, the uh, events of what was unfolding. Um, once again, you know, we want to hear from you. If you were involved, if you know someone who was affected, please get in touch. Tell us about your experiences. If you went down and you helped out, what did you see? What did you learn? What was the kind of, uh, you know, reactions locally? So please get in touch. Afnara Zuddin, eventually, Afnara Kiman Geslai, Kano Gashai Johor, so Nazan and Kheo, Kheo Mani, family member, Arai Soin, Tara affected Oisoin. Afnara Please, Shariko, uh, I'm not number us, email us. I'm not a please uh, call in Horo Kamra Hoka, Kira Dexon Hun Choin. Um, so, Tahir, we obviously watched a clip of people's reaction, and it almost feels as though, from you know what we've heard, it was it almost feels like a sense of we told you so. Yeah, you see, one of the main issues was the cladding, I believe. I mean, I know in London in the past few years, they've renovated a lot of buildings, put insulation. I mean, it helps us. Winter days were warmer, you know, hot days were cooler, but they didn't take into fact the fire safety risks, and I believe now it's all coming mm. into light. Sure. Abdul Magbay, what do you say to, you know, reports that claim that it was aesthetic, uh, aesthetically more pleasing and in terms of trying to attract potential funders and people to buy flats it was much more appealing to that uh, target audience what's your what's your kind of take on that well uh, the thi the thing is uh, there's co uh, well, uh, well that's from my own opinion they spent a lot of money on the cladding to make it look nice but the thing is they should have had a risk assessment on the fire if it had caught because that's the whole um, for the uk anyone in the uk you should know if there's building courts fire, there should be prevention, like what can we do? So if you don't have sprinklers, the only reason they didn't put sprinklers is because the fire should contain in itself. But that hasn't happened. Sure. Even the day uh, when that happened, we heard the day, just the day before that incident happened, someone, there was a fire uh, assessment or training going on just the day before that. Mm. And even after that, that happened, that's just appalling. Wow. Okay. Um, brother uh, Amjad, the, obviously accidents happen. 
But do you feel, you know, we're going to speak about your experiences and what you saw at ground level. Do you think this was negligence uh, from the part of the council or was this just an accident that happened like things no, do no, happen? Uh, without a doubt, this was negligence. Um, we, we, we know that because um, even the, um, even the pe people that actually live in that building and put their attention, even they realised, uh, you know what, uh, th these are some procedures are not being followed here, just like the gentleman you saw in the clip before. And there's many other um, um, incidents and the people will tell you as well. Like, I mean, there's no fire drill, there's no sprinklers, um, etc. They actually removed some of the safety equipment to make it look uh, uh, better. Now, this building is in a location where is, um, like the welfare li uh, live and not in the gate around, around the corner Kensington's around the corner mm. these are very very rich areas okay and it's spreading down all this whole area and it is true they have knocked down a lot of tall buildings there and um, when I used to live there I remember they used to be a lot more uh, they've actually been coming down sure and now um, th this is what this was happening uh, this was complete negligence it was all about just beautifying the building uh, so the people don't the rich people they don't they don't see they don't have a um, uh, um, bad bad view sure okay windows. thank you uh, Abdul Malik Bhai, coming back to you so tell me you know when you uh, tell me about your experiences you obviously got there on the 14th of June yep. the day of the actual you know uh, the night had passed you got there in the morning yeah okay tell me what you saw when you got there well, uh, the thing is, uh, as soon as me and my brother, uh, brother Amjad and myself, what we did was we just got a van from my friend, uh, brother Noin, from he works at uh, DPD. We told him, can we borrow it and shot? So they volunteered. Uh, we went to the, in the, in the cash and carry, filled it up with water and everything, whatever we can find. And for, that's the first thing we'll do, just uh, go there and see who needs help. But so you didn't, so you literally, sorry, so I'm clear, and I think the audience at home are clear as yeah. well. So you guys literally got a van, went to the nearest cash yeah. and carry, you put as much stuff as you could and you just drove down? Yeah. Mashallah, okay, carry so on. So as soon as uh, we did that, uh, the, the thing, uh, when we got the office, the fire was still burning, the building was still burning. Wow. But there was a phenomenal response with all the community from out of the borough, even yeah. Birmingham and Manchester, they're, they're actually coming with a lot of donations. Wow. So by the time at three o'clock in the afternoon, we made sure uh, we called the council, local council, and they announced to t stop the donations. Even after that, there was a lot of donations. Mm. So even uh, whatever happened, uh, it is a tragic whatever happened, but there was a good outcome, the fact that there was a unity amongst the community sure. and uh, people, So uh, and that was a good response that mm. they actually came to help. Mm. And. Uh, but I'm just, you were there as well, you know, what was, what was the kind of reaction from those affected, the families, because obviously a lot of the victims are, are, were, were affected, but in terms of the family members and say uh, neighbours, what, what kind of sense okay. or feeling did you well, get from them? On that day we did not see actually people, uh, any of the people that actually lived there, um, obviously they were taken to uh, different centres, but we knew a lot of people of the neighbours. Um, the Malik will remember, I actually bumped into someone that I did not see for 30 years. Mm. We actually went to uh, primary school together and I, and I, rec I recognised him. And then we started uh, talking and said, oh yes, I remember you from St Stephen's and he said the same thing. And I um, actually met quite a few people like this. So th this area is quite uh, close to me. I grew up in this area for about um, for 30 years of my life. So and the people were there, the, the neighbours, you know, everyone was devastated. The, one of the reasons that we had such a big response was everyone was actually, they felt it as if it was their own family members. And this one, straight away, they, they went and, straight away they went and got involved. Mm. That I had the same feeling in the morning. When I went to open up my office, I went there, we sat down, I was speaking to Abdul Malik, and there was another brother, Shah, as well. We were talking and it's like, you know what, we had a moment here. You know, there's loads of bad things happening around the world, but we are at this moment, this thing, and hopefully we don't ever experience it again, mm. but it's actually happened. And I just couldn't continue working, so mm. we decided to, that's okay, when we decided, early in the morning, we decided to cl close the shop mm. and then mm. decide to go out straight away. Okay. Straight away. Thank you. Um, Tahir, coming to you, in terms of uh, your experiences, so how are you kind of feeling and what was the kind of general vibe, you know, at university and within the local area amongst the youth? How did you, how did you feel the youth felt about what was that going on? The night it happened, I don't think anyone could go to sleep. We're all watching the live feeds on social media, seeing the news, seeing what we can do to help these people. But there was truly nothing we could do because the firefighters were like, you can't go there. And I know a lot. I know these brothers went there to help them on the scene. And um, then after, after all this happened, we realised that this cladding is on a lot of buildings that we live in ourselves. Mm. So we want them fire tested as well. And they have been fire tested and they failed. So we want to know what's going to happen next. What, is, what, rep what retrospective action mm. they're going to take next? Sprinklers, uh, new exits or whatnot. 
Sure. Okay. Uh, Abdul Malik Bai, in terms of, you know, uh, like you've said, and Brother uh, Amjad has spoken about as well, you know, the reaction was uh, from the local community was, you know, very quick and as, as required. Did you feel as though there was how, how organized was the way things were being run? Because we've heard so many things, uh, so many reports where people were saying it didn't feel organized, people didn't know what was going on. What was your kind of, you know, as a uh, you know, first-hand experience uh, what, what was, there? Uh, uh, the first moment that we went there, uh, obviously we saw everyone's coming with donations, they don't know where to go. What, was it organized, as in people knew what to do? At the start of it, it wasn't organized because it wasn't... Uh, taken lead by uh, someone but obviously then uh, the form of my friend uh, Zain, Malik, uh, Zain Lukman sorry he's the one uh, Muslim response uh, unit which we've done and we're working with the victims closer sure. right now which we have access to so what, what they did was they were the first ones there as well with other charities mm. and what they did was so they took in control so we have everyone so in terms of say people from the council were there yeah. any people in the council who were coordinating stuff this <laughs> is where so literally people and uh you know projects who who wanted to support yeah. they came down and they very much started dictating and organizing yeah okay so the, the, the surprising yeah. figures i thought that was the main thing that's going to happen like the council going to be there yeah. the police, gonna be there, police gonna be there. officers and all of that it but, wasn't but it, it, it wasn't like that that's why i was surprised i haven't uh, seen any from the council officials mm. actually come and taking any lead it was the people like humanitarian aid from all the numerous charities who are coming and taking the lead and uh, organizing stuff. That's, I, I just couldn't believe it myself. Mm. Okay. I can add to that. Mm. Yeah. Do you want to say, uh, when, we, when, we went, when we actually went there, uh, we, we loaded up a van. Now, yes, there was a big response from the community, um, but these things do t uh, actually need a leadership. When we went to different centers, now they were overwhelmed with uh, the donations, but these donations need to be used and they need certain donations. So when we went to Lancaster Gate, that one was actually really packed out. When we went there and uh, they saw that we had a big van and uh, we actually had two vehicles. So when they saw that, they said, look, brother, um, we'll take some of your stuff, but this other center needs certain different items. Okay, so what we start doing is start moving things out and um, stuff in the thing, and we actually start rotating things around uh, the different centers. So we actually spend most of the day doing some of this as well. So we went to the Al Manar Center as well, and the Salvation Army Center there as well, and we start moving things around. These things, I know it was it happened suddenly, and I know no one's actually prepared for anything like this. But we are living in the UK, and alhamdulillah, in the UK, we don't expect things like this. We expect a, b a better response because. Look, we had the fire department, there's loads of checks that happened, um, you know, this, um, when I used to work in the Shaman Centre and in other places as well, I know the drills, okay. This, none of this was actually coordinated or organised and they were very, very slow. I think the, the local people were better, um, better well prepared and they were actually uh, doing a better job um, organising it and moving things around. Sure, okay. Um, in terms of uh, Brother Abdul Malik, coming back to you, uh, we heard about the riot that took place in yeah. the town hall. It was clear that people were very angry and from what you've said about uh, the situation in terms of lack of organization and stuff like that, do you think that fueled you know, people's emotions and it just made them more angrier because they felt as though nothing was, be nothing was actually happening? Because on the one hand, you know, uh, you know, seeing the building burning because we know it burnt mm -hmm. for, for days after that and then almost feeling as though there's no structure here as well. We can clearly see that a building's burning down, you know, people are probably mm -hmm. stuck inside and yet there's no support locally. Who do you go to? Who is actually taking lead? That, that is true. Uh, it, it has definitely fueled uh, the community, even the people who, the majority of them on the protest, they're victims when there's all the victims' families who survived. They even went there as well. Even whatever uh, uh, house they were given to stay in, they left their houses to go and protest. Because the thing is, because they, it's not the fact that it's just burnt. They've been notified, the council, like, you know, can you sort out the risk assessment, the fire, everything. Not from now, from years ago as well. It's been all on papers, but they haven't done nothing about it. So the thing with them is, uh, even though obviously I'm not in the situation that I live in that building, they lost their loved ones. They were went there to go and go inside the building and get them, but they weren't allowed because of the uh, police. So they lost and I, I could I could I couldn't understand like, how they would actually feel because obviously mm. I'm not in that situation. Mm. But that will definitely have fueled it, and obviously as you can see, uh, though it was just a matter of time mm. before. Um, 
just goes out of proportion. Sure, sure. Once again, you know, please, if you were involved or you know someone who was affected, you know, please get in touch. You've got the number of the screen. You've got the email as well. Let us know what your thoughts are, what your kind of feelings are about what's happened. Do you feel that enough was done? What should have happened? You know, what should we be doing moving forward so similar incidents like this never happen again? After Kita Hulero Balulon situation, Kilamanush Zanbasani Geloni, after a please Amra Loga Shoriko Uiba, Telephone Horoka, Amra Hoka, after a Kita Ita Bisholi Azanoin. To hear, you know, we, we spoke about obviously people's frustration, anger. Um, you know, we, we heard reports where some people at the early stages they wanted to actually go into the building and save people, mm -hmm. but they were stopped by you know uh, officials obviously at the entrance what's your what's yeah. your kind of feelings towards that, that angered a lot of people because they said that if the firefighters aren't going to go up we'll go ourselves but since the firefighters weren't letting them they were like all oh, right the death of these people on the firefighters and the police's hands mm. another sad thing was um, a lot of uh, the youngers noticed this as well mm. uh, news helicopters will come they'll come near the building while it's burning take photos and then go back which is very sad I think, I think it should be made clear, obviously, uh, the police were following procedure yeah. because sometimes, you know, it's not that people can't go up and obviously save people. It's more about trying to control the situation and follow procedure because obviously those people, they might end up obviously uh, affecting themselves in terms of health and safety. They might get hurt. They might be affected by the flame and all of that. But, you know, you, you, you touched upon something quite important there that people were taking photographs and, uh, you know, from helicopters. Do you feel that maybe there could have, there should have been a um, strategy in place where, whereby, you know, use of helicopters and other vehicles could have aided in rescuing more people? Yeah, because we're in the 21st century, we've got so much technology on our hands, but if there's a fire on the top floor of a building, it seems like we're helpless, we can't do anything. I mean, we can send people to the moon, but we can't send people to the top of a burning tower block. I mean, that's a bit, mm. that's quite sad. Mm. The you know, Dahir Mashallah makes a very good point. Um, I guess, I guess, you know, it's how, how difficult do you think it was for people? And, and we'll come back because we're, we're going into a break. Uh, but, you know, we'll carry on with the discussion when we come back. So please, you know, once again, do stay with us and uh, get in touch and tell us what you think. Uh, stay with us and we'll see you after the break.